Hello and welcome to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the approximately weekly show in which I, Reynard Wilson, your friend and interlocutor, attempt to explain everything that can be explained and some things that can't about the brain of one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he's often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. He's out of this world because he believes in things that other conspiracy theorists find far too nutty. And today, for example, we'll look at Mark's fear of dust. No, no, just the normal kind of dust that you find everywhere. If you were to leave a vehicle outside and, and come back to it the next day to find that it is covered in a fine layer of some kind of sandy dust, well, that's what's happened to Mark's vehicle, and he's really not happy about it. He, Mark is convinced that this layer of particles that has settled on his car is actually evidence of a vast and deadly conspiracy. The kind of conspiracy that, if left unchecked by the sort of brilliant minds that run Save Us Now, well, that conspiracy could destroy the Earth and all of humanity. Yeah, so it rained last night, and we'll see all of this chemical stratospheric aerosol injection particulates. You know that. We'll see nano. But you see they've bunched, bunched up. You see them. You see them. You see them. It's quite interesting, isn't it? If you spot a 60-year-old balding man wandering around the streets of Gateshead in a state of apparent confusion as he looks into the windows of vehicles and then tut-tuts uh, when he notices, say, a, a clump of dust or, or, or some other speckling or, or blemishment, <laughs> don't worry, it's just Mark Steele. He doesn't mean anything by it. He, he just doesn't understand very basic things about the way the world works, such as, uh, well, where dust comes from. Well, if you've been watching the skies over the last uh, few months, you'll see all that crap coming out the back of the planes, which they say has got something to do with, uh, what was it? Condensation. They say that the white stuff that comes out the back of an aeroplane when kerosene is burnt in a jet turbine in cold, high altitudes is something to do with condensation. What a ridiculous idea! Ah. Mark Steele is going to explain what it really is. So there we have, right, so I've, you can see I've just put the near dear magnet there. You see that? Look, see the magnetism? You see that? You see the right? It's hard to see from Mark's video, but some of the grains of sand were attracted to his magnet. And that's most likely because the mineral was magnetite. It's an oxide of iron that is weakly attracted to, to magnetic fields. And, uh, and, and it's abundant. This stuff is everywhere. And if you see a beach that has darker colored sand, if you were to stick a magnet into that, you would find it covered with this stuff. Magnetite is a very common mineral. And if you're in the business of smelting iron, it's one of the most abundant ores. So the fact that Mark has found some in the wild really isn't all that surprising to anybody except Mark. I mean, how dangerous is that? Magnet, magnetic materials aren't safe, by the way. Yeah. So no wonder everybody's ill. Uh, I know they're gearing up to make everybody ill. I personally would prefer not to breathe in plumes of magnetic dust. But the sad fact is that they happen. Every few years, we get a little mini dust storm that decides to settle in the United Kingdom. Uh, and sometimes it, it turns the skies brown, and, and sometimes it settles on our car. Uh, and the sad fact is that if it's settling in our environment, we're probably breathing it in. And, and for the most of us, it really doesn't do us all that much harm at all. It's, uh, it's not particularly dangerous compared to any kind of dust. Get on to your local MPs. Uh, they've had hundreds, hundreds of people complaining to local MPs this morning. I've already reported this to Gated Council. I've, I've got a nice reply. wasn't uh, wasn't basically dismissive at all. What it said was, 
speak to the uh, aviation authorities about this, OK, because they said it's got nothing to do with them. They invest- well, Mark thinks that the council weren't dismissive at all, but evidently they did just tell him to go and bother some other government department, which is nice. Uh, Mark's ego will not allow him to realise that he has just been dismissed for being an idiot. But maybe the last lap will be on us, because I've heard that Mark Steele is working up this nanometer particulate stuff into a tight five and he's gonna be trying it out at some of the local comedy clubs. And guess what? I've obtained the video. Now, please, put your hands together for Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist and stand-up comedian, Mark Steele. It's been an amazing wild ride into the wacky world of Mark Steele. We've learnt so much, such as the fact that the dust that has settled on Mark Steele's car is actually a form of nanometer particulate and not the Saharan sand that we all thought it was. <laughs> How could we have been so silly? We've also seen the inside of Mark Steele's exquisitely furnished crime laboratory, where he used a magnet to show that it was made of a, a magnetic material, and in doing so, we have become disabused of the belief that there was ever any sand there at all, because, as Mark Steele explained, sand is not magnetic. No, no, never. But perhaps the most important and endearing thing we've learned is that Mark Steele is a fantastically talented stand-up comedian, and I, for one, expect to see him gracing the stage at Live at the Apollo, or or maybe (laughs) sitting down with Trevor Noah, I'm sure they'll have a great conversation, so uh, it can only be a matter of a few months before his talent is noticed beyond this show. If you've loved Mark Steele as much as I have, maybe say hi to him on his bit shoot. Please subscribe, and uh, in any case, I'll see you back in a week's time for another exciting, thrill-packed episode of Mind of Steele.